Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about longitudinal magnetization and transverse magnetization. And what are the differences between the two? And we hear these terms quite a bit. We hear them when we're talking about how hydrogen or our magnetic vector is behaving when we deliver RF to our patient. And now, in order for us to understand this, we need to kind of start from the beginning. Where we have our, we're going to start by taking our patient and putting them into the scanner. We put our patient into the scanner. We're going to go ahead and align those hydrogen protons parallel and anti-parallel with our B0. All right. So we're going to go ahead and have these protons aligned parallel and anti-parallel with our B0. At this point, we have done nothing to our patient besides slide them into the scanner. We magnetized our patient, and now we created organization in this chaos of hydrogen pointing in all different directions. We line them and they're all precessing at the same rate. So we have this situation where we have hydrogen uh, aligned parallel with this B0 and anti-parallel. We're always going to have more of these protons pointing parallel or aligning with this B0 than against it. So what happens is this. We're going to have this accumulated magnetization in one direction. All right, I'm going to just draw an extra proton here just to kind of drive home the point I'm trying to make. Now, the cool thing about magnetic fields is magnetic fields can cancel each other out. And so, yes, we have six of these hydrogen in this picture here, but some of these are pointing anti-parallel or against the B0, and some are pointing with it. The ones that are pointing against it cancel out some that are pointing with it. So I can't detect the magnetic field from a few of these protons, from four of these. They're still there but I can't detect the magnetic field. All right, so what that leaves me with is if I remove that magnetic field detected by these tiny hydrogen, and again, each hydrogen has its own magnetic moment or its own tiny little magnet, magnetic field. They're tiny little magnets. We can take these accumulated hydrogen that are pointing parallel to or be zero and add them up. And what we get is this accumulated vector of magnetic field, this net magnetism. Alright, so we get net magnetism. All right. Net magnetism is really important because this is kind of what we have to think about. When we're manipulating hydrogen and when we're delivering our pulses, we're tilting this magnetic vector, this net magnetism, and we're manipulating that. Alright, so I'm going to take this away just so we can deal with this net magnetism at this point. And when we look at net magnetism, we have our patient lying in the scanner, we've done nothing to the patient yet, and we have net magnetism in our patient. This net magnetism is always going to be in the longitudinal plane. So we can call this actually longitudinal magnetization. Longitudinal magnetization. So we've got this net magnetism, patient at rest, laying in the scanner, done nothing to the patient yet, longitudinal magnetization. We have net magnetism in this longitudinal magnetization. Now we deliver an RF pulse to our patient. So if I go ahead and deliver an RF pulse to my patient, I take this net magnetism and I shift it 90 degrees into the transverse plane. And we call this transverse magnetization. When we have our magnetic vector in the transverse plane, we have transverse magnetization. Now over a period of time we're going to measure something. All right? and we're going to get into this in a, in a different video, but we're going to measure the recovery of longitudinal magnetization over a period of time and the decay of transverse magnetization over a period of time. But the difference between the two lies in what direction or what orientation our net magnetism is lying in. Right. If it's aligned with our B0, we have net magnetism. In the longitudinal planes, we have longitudinal magnetization. After we tilt it to the transverse plane, the trans we have transverse magnetization, but we have to lose all of our longitudinal magnetization so we can put it in the transverse plane. So we have transverse magnetization. And over a very rapid period of time, we lose this transverse magnetization and then over a longer period of time where you regain this longitudinal magnetization. Right? So that's 
the difference between longitudinal magnetization and transverse magnetization. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.